elevation certificate. NFIP requires communities to obtain the lowest floor elevation information for newly constructed and substantially improved buildings. You must maintain this information and it provides a formal record of compliance. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the elevation certificate because it's, it's fundamental, it's straightforward. However, I do want to remind you, the instructions are your friend. Because like if I read this part, if somebody says, hey, who can complete the elevation certificate? Right here, land surveyor, engineer, architect. Those are the fundamentals that we see about what the requirements are. Community officials who are even authorized by law. That hardly ever happens in the state of Florida. I don't know how it is in your areas, but none of us in the state of Florida want to sign the elevation certificate because then you're essentially signing responsibility for that. Plus, it's an apparent conflict of interest if I'm signing an elevation certificate for people in my jurisdiction, because then they'd be like, well, why didn't you sign mine? Well, why didn't you sign his? You know, Particularly if they know you're signing them and you're not charging, and surveyors are charging, then I got a line of surveyors out in front of my office going, hey, you're stealing money from me. What are you doing? Well, South Carolina with engineers and surveyors. Mm -hmm. Surveyors. Engineers can't do an elevation certificate. Right. And then, they, yeah, and it leads to the debate, hey, you're taking money from me. Here's the other part where it's our friend. So what do I do if the surveyor can't gain access to a crawl space? Does anybody know off the top of your head? No, neither do I. But you know what? There it is. It's on the elevation certificate. So all these little caveats, all these little incidental questions on what a surveyor is supposed to do if they can't get into the crawl space. Well, right there, I can use the yardstick or tape measure. I can contact the floodplain administrator. Or I can use the documentation from the known height. Those are my parameters. That is on the elevation certificate instructions. Once again, one of those things that it's, it's sometimes it seems like it's obvious, but you don't have to remember all this stuff. You just have to know where to look for it. It's in the instructions of the EC. There's another one of our lowest floor diagrams. I won't spend any more time on that, but it gives you the idea. Remember, the biggest thing is based on the building diagram, which we're going to look at in what zone you're in. This is a great example right here that shows you, yeah, it's a slab on grade building, but depending on what flood zone I'm in, I take the measurements differently. Here's all my building diagrams. I, I like this one because I bring up the highlight down the bottom. A floor that is below ground level grade on all sides is considered a basement, even if the floor is used for living purposes, an office, garage, workshop, etc. The definition of a basement is important, and understanding how basements are handled is important. We're going to talk a little bit about what's covered, what's not covered. So, for example, like this walkout here, it's only on grade on three sides. Is that a basement? No. 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 It's got to be on four sides. <clears throat> what about if I have a living room that's sunken, the floor is sunken three feet, but it's sunken all the way around? That's a basement. That's a basement. Yeah, it's below grade to on all four sides. So many sandy claims be denied because of that. What's that? So many sandy claims be denied because of that, like Hoboken and New Jersey City. They made those. Patterns. Yeah, when all of a sudden, hey, basement. I didn't know this was a yeah, basement. That's right. Yeah, the, the the takeaway from this is keep in mind the basement doesn't always have to be that old creepy storage place that was in your grandma's house with one single hanging light bulb that smelled old and musty and you never wanted to go down there. Not that I'm afraid of basements or anything. <laughs> But the idea is, keep in mind, the basement isn't always storage. It's not always what you think it is. Underground, there are different parameters that could define what a basement actually is. Here's just the basic of our elevation certificate. Keep in mind some of the things that are important to remember is what data is being used. Here's our uh, areas where the numbers get input. Bottom of lowest horizontal structural member B zones only. If I have an A zone house, should I have any numbers there? No. Keep in mind, those are the kind of things that we want to be cognizant of. So if somebody asks me, hey, where does this number go? I'm in an A zone. And this is one of my choices. That choice is wrong. Because if it's in an A zone, I shouldn't be filling in anything in that B zone category. Oh. Record retention, there's no statute of limitations. You've got to hold on to it. It should be stored, ECs, elevation certificate should be stored indefinitely. 
Does that mean that you have to put them on your website if you're a county electronically? Nope. All it means is I have to store a hard copy. Well, doesn't that help also for the community CRS this time? It does. If I have it on my website and people are able to see it electronically, I get CRS, yeah. Community Rating System, points for it. But it's not a requirement. Okay. But I do get points for it. Yeah, that's why a lot of communities are doing it. And old maps should be retained for archival purposes as well. Because once these maps are gone or gotten rid of, who knows if you can get another copy, but all of a sudden when you're trying to determine something from 15 or 20 years ago, if you don't have some kind of documentation, you're on a wild goose chase to figure it out. Not that that's ever happened in my county either, 